skaters it's called the v skater um kind of a play on words because skaters are all based off of the wake pattern that they make as well as where they ride where the hook rides to make it tilt um and how much water it pushes as well as the foam on the back is shaped in a v so um it'll make a little more sense here in a bit so anyway so thread that i'm using i'm using 50 denier no, no, it's 50, yeah, 50 needed gel spun. Um, doesn't really matter what thread you use. You can use 6 aught Vivas, works really good too. You can even use like 140. Um, we're going to be using a little bit of deer hair with it, so anything that you can pull on. The only thing about gel spun, if you're not used to gel spun, it'll cut foam if you pull on it too quickly. So if you're not used to using gel spun with foam, then I recommend using 6 aught or 140. Anyway, so this hook is a T10 6H size 4. Whatever size fly that you like to tie, so say you usually like to use a size 6 for the Deschutes, or if you like to use a size 2 for the Northumqua, size up a hook size, whatever you want. The weight of the hook is really important for making it tilt in whatever way that you want it to. So. The heavier the hook is will make it slant up and it will help the foam hit the water better and actually help it skate even though that it's a heavier fly. Um, you can also even put it a little bit of lead in the back end of the fly and I'll explain that later to make it tilt a little bit better. Plus the bigger hook will help your hook up ratio. Anyway, so we're going to start this off. So we're going to build a little bit of a thread base. Start up right about where it re, right about where it turns over right here. And you're going to work your way back to just in front of the hook point. Again, reason being is that you're actually going to leave all of that exposed. If you don't, if you work your way all the way back to say right here, your weight distribution will be really off and then it'll ride kind of level. And then in conflicting currents, especially say like popping flies on the North Umqua, you're gonna, your, your fly is going to sink a lot, even though you put a ton of foam on it, like one out of every three or four that you're going to tie is actually going to fish right. So the more hook that you leave exposed within reason, the better. Anyway, so let's see. We're going to start it off with some rubber legs. This is a real buggy fly. Um, you can tie them in a whole ton of different colors and stuff. Brown and orange is always popular when it comes to steelhead flies, um, especially when you're talking about skating and popping and stuff. So we're in time in brown and orange. So we're going to do Chacon's rubber legs and just straight up orange. You can also use a fluorescent orange. It glows really well in the sun. Um, but this one's kind of a more neutral color. So you can take the whole thing and you're just going to pull one of them. One string. This whole entire fly, all you need is one strand, and if you cut it right, there's no waste whatsoever. So what you're going to do is you're going to pair them up like this. Pair them up. And you're going to cut them level. Once you cut them level, you're going to run your scissors to the very bottom of it, and cut there. You're going to take one of them, and you're going to set the other one aside. We're going to take, we're going to use that one later. First one. You're going to lay on the opposite side of you. And you're just going to give her three wraps. Right dead center. The next one you're going to fold over towards you. And you're going to just V it off. So, if you do it right, your legs should end right next to each other in the back. That's the perfect length for this fly. Say you're tying a size 6 or a size 8. Maybe you'll trim them a little bit, but honestly, the heavier that those rubber legs are, 
the better. Again, you want your you want the butt end of this fly to ride deep into the water column to make it so that it pushes water on the bill of the fly. It helps it float. Really, so take the Klamath skater, for example. That fly skates well because the butt end of that fly pushes up against the foam. This one's just like that, but a little bit more extreme and there's a lot more foam. Anyway, so we're going to take that bead off piece of foam, or bead off um, rubber legs. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little flash. This, we're just using orange crystal flash. Really doesn't matter what flash you do. You don't even really need to add flash. This is a little bit, um, it looks a little bit like an October caddis, and when an October caddis actually dislodges from the bottom, um, it leaves a bubble trail. It uses all the or all the bubbles in its gills to help it get up. So generally speaking, crystal flash and October catter October caddis emerging patterns um, is super effective. Um, so we're just going to do the exact same thing as previously. We're going to start on the other side of the fly. We're going to bring it over to us or over to me. And I like to trim it just a hair longer than the rubber legs. You can cut it at but generally if you leave it just a little bit longer, it makes it so um, you see it a little better. It doesn't just blend in with the rubber legs itself. So now we are going to work with some foam. So this is two millimeter in root beer. You could do black, you could do orange, doesn't matter. Um, it has a lot to do with how deep the water column is that the fish can even see the color. Um, take Again, I keep on using the North Umpqua, for example, but that ri that river, on average, they're rising from six to eight feet deep, so it has everything to do with how the fly hits the water rather than the colors that you use. But, say, the Deschutes, where you're rising them in three to four feet of water often, color matters a little more. So. We're going to cut two pieces of foam that we're going to work with this whole time. You're going to cut a smaller piece and then a longer piece. This whole package, is it's a rectangle, right? So you're going to use the narrow end, and you're going to cut roughly probably like two centimeters. This is your thin piece. So you're going to cut it all the way up. If you're tying a bunch of these flies, you can even cut it in half right here. You can fold it over and cut right here, and that's two flies worth for the small piece. Now, the bigger piece is one fly worth, so you're going to literally double that. You're going to do about four, maybe three and a half, and you're going to cut it all the way up. Like that. The bigger the bill on this fly, the better it floats, um, within reason. If you if you really have a huge bill on it, it'll be really difficult to cast, um, but it'll fish really good. Kind of depends on how big the fly is as well. I'm going to just trim this up a little bit more. You can use a razor as well to do this. Um, it just kind of depends on your personal preference. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just give it kind of a, we're going to angle it. I like to do a little rounded cut like that, and you're going to do it on both sides. Like that. Doesn't need to be perfect, but I don't like to just straight cut it like that without rounding it a little bit, because otherwise you get some weird angle in the middle, which I just don't think looks natural when it comes to a bug. You're going to do the same thing with your small piece of foam. Like that. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your small piece of foam, pointing well, the little point's pointing towards the eye, but the rest of the foam is pointing back towards the bend of the hook. And you're just going to tie it in right to where 
your rubber legs are. You're also going to do the same with your bigger piece of foam. I like the bigger piece of foam to just overhang a little bit past where you tied in your small piece, mainly just because it sticks to the shank of the hook and it doesn't rotate. Um, foam has a tendency that when it hits the current, it'll want to off-center itself, which will make it spin. You don't want that. You want to be able to, you want to have a good thread base in the beginning, latch down your materials really tight to try and prevent that. So, step two, we're going to use two different kinds of dubbing. This is up to your personal preference. For me, I'm using UV shrimp and copper. Two awesome colors, but you want a hot spot in the back and then the body to be a different color. So for the hot spot, which we're using in pink or in this shrimp color, we're just gonna grab a decent sized pinch. Nothing too big. Um, because you want the profile of the body to not have some weird bulge in the back. Again, this is supposed to look somewhat like a bug, so we're going to try and do our best to keep the, keep the taper of an insect. And we're just going to dub that on normal. You can use wax there if you want to dub your, dub your um, dubbing on, but I don't think it matters that much. It can be pretty loose, too. So we're just going to wrap that up. We're just going to create kind of a little ball here. Nice and tight. You don't want it too loose because fish's teeth are going to just totally wreck that. So the tighter it is, the less, less room for error there is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab these two pieces of foam and we're going to fold them forward. Both of them together. Pretty tight. So right where your dubbing buff ended, you're going to give it three securing wraps right here. One, two, three. Okay. That's just point everything forward and start off the process. So now you're going to take your barred rubber legs that you cut earlier, that other half, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to fold them over like this. Make them perfectly even. And you are going to cut at the bottom. So you have two, you have a quarter, two quarters of the original full length. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pair it right where you just tied in your thread, right where your thread is hanging. You're going to do it about 60 40, so not directly in the middle. I like it where the longer piece is just offset towards the back. So again, about 60, 40, and you're going to do both of them. So both of them on one side do about three securing wraps. Now you're going to pull one side and you're going to rotate it over to you. So I started on the camera side and I pulled only one set over to me. So now you've got that. Again, the longer sets pointing back, both for weight as well as just kind of a staggered effect, makes the butt, makes the legs look a little bit more natural, rather than having two perfectly set pieces. So now, you've secured it about three times. We're going to take our copper dubbing. This is just ice dub, and you're going to grab a small pinch, like that. You're going to dub it on just like you did the shrimp pink. And in between these legs, you're going to pull the back legs back and you're going to wrap in between them. This is going to splay them and make it so that they don't just mash together in the water. Okay. So now, notice that they're all open. Even when you pop them, if you decide to pop this fly, this is a great skating fly as well. You don't necessarily need to put action on it. But you can, every single time that you release pressure, those legs will splay out again, rather than just can't, keeping real tight. It's pretty important. So now, we're going to take our ice tub and copper again. Actually, you know what? Here, we're going to make dubbing loop. 
You can just straight up dub the body of this, but I really like the way that the dubbing loop keeps it a little bit unkempt. Um, and that'll make a little bit more sense here in just a second. So, you're holding your dubbing loop open with one hand. You're going to grab a decent sized pinch of your copper. Put it in there. This doesn't need to look perfect. In fact, a little bit, you just want it to be even. But you don't need to like line up the pieces or anything like that because you're going to spin it and you actually want it to be a little bit wiry. So now, we're going to grab our TPFS dubbing spinner. And we're going to give it a rip. Notice I'm pinching. I'm not letting it spin until that. So this is what I mean by instead of dubbing it, you just run your fingers up it and notice how it slicks it all up, but it's not really packed in there. Um, I do this because when I wrap it like this, we're just going to wrap up to right about where you started your thread, just shy of the eye. Notice that when I wrap it, it's a little bit wiry. It looks a little bit like legs. It's buggy. Um, in fact, when a fish takes it and pulls some of those fibers out, it only looks better. You can even brush it, um, but just for efficiency, I don't. So now, again, we're about, I don't know, we're just shy of the eye. You don't want to get right up on the eye because um, with any up-eyed fly, you need to use some type of turtle knot or um, anything that will snell it rather than tying a clinch knot straight to the eye, and that's for hook rate, your hookup ratios. Um, so if you tie it right up to the eye, it's really, really hard to put a loop knot around it. Anyway, so we're going to fold this foam over, and we're going to put three wraps on it. Again, just to secure it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our small piece of foam and we're going to cut roughly two centimeters up. So about the same width here. We're just going to cut it flush or cut it short. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this long piece of foam and fold it over the short piece and latch it down. Again, three securing wrap or wraps. So this is why I call it the V skater. What you're going to do is you're going to cut a V like that in the foam. I like to do it about halfway down the body, not too, too far down. Otherwise you mess with the taper of the bug, but this looks a lot like the ridged back of an, of an insect, as well as it helps the water flow over the top of it when you pop it, if you decide to pop it. So from there, we're going to take this other piece, so your excess, and right where you made your cuts, we're going to cut it again like that. With this, you're going to put it right on top, just offset it a little bit, so just, just a little bit forward. We're going to wrap that down too. One, two, three. So now we've got this cool V back. This flap will help hit water when you pop it. And then I just like to cut it with kind of a U shape, not a big flush cut where you cut it at a rectangle just because it looks a little bit more natural. So depending on where you fish and how you how you like to fish these, if you like to pop flies or if you like to put action on them or if you like to just dead skein them, seeing it's a big, big issue. Especially if you're casting it, you know, 100 plus feet, you're not going to see this fly in heavy chop, which is how you fish poppers. Um, so we're going to put a little indicator tag on here. So this is about one and a half. I'm just going to cut about one and a half centimeters. It's a little bit narrower than your small piece that you laid over the back. And it's probably like just shy of an inch long. And I'm just going to cut a little rectangle. So that's going to make it so that you can see it here in a second. So with this, 
Again, I like to cut a little V. You don't have to, but I think it's cool looking. And it adds to the, the flare of the bug. So, little V. We're going to take your little V and we're going to point it back and latch it down. You want it to overhang a little bit just because otherwise it'll slip if you cut it right or if you tie it right on um, to where the slits cut. And then I actually like to cut this just a little bit shy. So that's like, that was just shy of an inch. So I'm going to cut maybe a couple millimeters off just to make it look good. All right, so now when you cast that thing way out there, it's got an indicator tag um, so you can keep track of it and see it, which that's the whole point of fishing a dry fly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fly and we're going to flip it upside down. That'll make more sense here in a second. <clears throat> this is just dyed orange deer hair. Um, natural deer hair is really, really good too. You can even use elk or moose. Elk and moose is a little bit harder to spin and hard to give a fuller body. So I generally like deer, but if you're, if you're more comfortable with you working with elk and moose, you can. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab a pretty good clump. You can always pull it out after the fact if you think you grab too much, but we're going to be trimming it anyway, so not a huge deal. So pretty good clump there. This is supposed to look like a bug. So having it all perfectly stacked and everything is, while it makes the fly look pretty in the vise, it's not as efficient when you fish it. So what I like to do instead of stacking it is I'll just lay my palm out and kind of do this. And then I'll just generally align the hairs, but you don't want them all in one line. It's just not as fishy and it doesn't look as buggy. Steelhead or the abstractness of a fly helps when you're fishing for steelhead and especially with poppers and skaters because everything when it's factory tied is to the same dimensions so when you're tying your own you want them to look different so they're all kind of unkept what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab you're gonna measure it up to the fly and you're gonna cut roughly the flies length out of that clump of deer hair Just like that, just flush. So we've got about the fly's length. Oops, I don't drop it all. About the fly's length of deer hair. And flush cut. So what you're going to do is you're going to point all the strands forward towards the eye, so the actual uncut end. And you're going to lay the cut end roughly halfway through the fly. So line them up about where the first set of rubber legs is pointing towards the eye and you're going to wrap them in. So do one loose wrap and then tighten up the second. And then just like an Elkhair Caddis, you're just going to kind of weave your way through the strands just to secure it. Be careful when you're wrapping that you don't pinch these little guys because it'll happen when you, when you have the whole fly face down. Um, you just got to be kind of aware that there's foam back there that you can trap. But what we're going to do with all these strands that are pointing up now is we're going to pull them to the sides. This is why I like to use gel spun. It's kind of slippery. It's easier to do. If you use, say, 140, you may have to spread them and adjust them before you really wrench on it, which isn't the end of the world. You just kind of have to be aware of that. So we're going to... Spread them. You just want it nice and even. So the whole thing. Isn't like offset to one side or the other. How it hits the water is super important. And if say you have a whole ton of hair over here. And not a bunch over here. It'll literally make your fly lean. When you put action on it. Which is not good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip it back over. You're gonna work your you're gonna pull all of this back and you're gonna work your thread on up to the eye. And at this point we're gonna whip finish. So 
So I like to do it three times. Awesome. And then we're going to cut the tie. So at this point, you're done with the tying portion. Now is when we trim the deer hair a little bit. So now what I do is I literally run my scissors right along the belly of the fly and I'll cut the first slit like this. What I'm doing is I'm just making it flat so there's no weird bulge in the center of it. Notice that when I cut it, I didn't I left these long in here. I think that adds to the bugginess of the fly and it's, it really does help. Um, again, because you kind of want the fly to be a little bit abstract. All right. There you have it. That is the V Skater, one of my all time favorites and a fish catcher. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, drop on by the shop and say hi sometime. Anyway, take it easy.